Hey guys, after design leaks and delayed launch, the Sonos Sub Mini is finally here, and we're super excited to talk about it. It is a more affordable and compact, but at the same time quite a, an overall less powerful subwoofer as compared to the Sonos Sub Gen 3. Yet, it may be the sub that Sonos users actually need. Let's get into the review. Starting what you get in the box, you have Sub Mini in a nice protective fabric and a removable cable. That is it, not sure what else I expected. Sub itself is pretty small, with 30 centimeters in height and about 23 centimeters in diameter. It comes in black or white with matte finish. The glossiness of the big sub has always made me question, why? How does that even make sense? So it's nice to see they've given the new device a more appealing look. Sonos says it hides in plain sight, while being elegant and compact. I'd say it only hides if you have specific aesthetics in-house. To me, it looks like an elegant trash can. But that being said, it does look better than typical square sub, like the one we got from Samsung. Setting up was super easy. Plug it in, connect via the app, a link to the soundbar of your choice to sync, and we're ready to go. This is where those Apple parallels can be drawn. It just works. For our setup, we tested it with Sonos Ray as well as Beam Gen 2. In both cases, we watched several movies and played some music, with and without sub enabled. Something also to note, once you pair the sub to the Sonos system, it reconfigures the soundbar to not output those low frequencies and leave all that work for the sub. This frees up the processing on the soundbar, making it just a little bit more crisp. The soundbars have plenty of bass on their own right out of the box. Why do we need anything else? But when we turned on the sub, we also got a subtle change that just filled the void that we didn't know was there. It was not life-changing, but it wasn't supposed to be. The way my wife describes it, turning on the sub mini adds in an extra layer of tactile feedback, and I agree with this. You can hear the low frequencies just fine from the soundbars, but with the sub, you can also feel them. Inside, there are two 6-inch woofers that face each other and create pretty impressive force cancelling effect that gets rid of any and all buzzing and rattling noises. From the time that we've been using it, we didn't see or hear any shake from it, even when it was going hard. So placing woofers facing each other is clearly working out for Sonos. Check out this glass of water while we rock some chins. <laughs> According to Sonos, due to its design, you can actually place it anywhere in the room and you should have very similar performance. Also using Sonos TruePlay, you can calibrate the sound to match your room shape and acoustics. There are also controls in the app to adjust the amount of bass you want. In regards to volume, it will automatically adjust it through the paired soundbar, which is very convenient. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more tech videos like this. In terms of compatibility, it can be linked with most current Sonos devices, but recommended use cases are paired with the Ray, Beam, One SL, or even IKEA Symphonisk, which is a speaker made in calibration between the two companies. To be honest, based on what we've experienced here, for users who currently own Ray, I would recommend upgrading to Beam rather than getting Sub Mini, as you'd get considerable improvement in sound quality as well as quality of light features like ARC support via HDMI. On the other hand, if you already have Beam, then this sub is a nice addition for improved overall sound experience. In conclusion, I feel Sonos has done well with the sub as there was clearly a gap for this in their lineup. The smaller sub would be a great addition to the more budget Sonos setups in the smaller rooms, such as the ones we have in Singapore, and if you don't want to upset your neighbors too much. There is plenty of kick from it, and with the included controls, you can push it harder when needed. As I mentioned earlier, Sonos equipment is not cheap, and once you get into the ecosystem, you're very much committed with the amount of money you've already spent, but you do get quality equipment which is easy to use. Compared to the competition, you do lose out on some prosumer features and customizations, but you don't really need to have an education in audio engineering. That's it from our review, let us know what you think about Sonos Sub Mini, and if you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.